hope you enjoyed your tea break. Next, uh, a talk is an uh, the next talk is an interesting one by Kenneth Lee who writes at fivemeanders.com, Daily Vanity, and Avenue One magazine. He specializes in creating provocative content that touches on hot button social issues. Today, he will share with us about creating blog posts that get people talking on social media without getting into trouble. Let's welcome Kenneth to the stage. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, okay, so she did a really fantastic in, um, introduction. Uh, my name is Kenneth. Um, I, by training, I am a branding communication uh, consultant. So, yeah, it's actually what I do for all my clients in the past, and now I am actually in house. I work with shopping mall, my village at Serangoon Gardens in the day, but at night. A large amount of my life is spent on five meanders writing for the site as well as for Daily Vanity, City Nomads, Avenue One, which is a travel magazine. So um, I just want to share with you today uh, what I care about and what I believe in. And before I continue, I just want to say that to me, what's important is that every one of us reclaim a bit of our own voice you know like as children we tend to have this say anything we want do anything we want kind of a, a behavior and as we grow a, a little bit older we tend to suppress that we tend to push it back but our opinions and our thoughts are as valuable and valid as the next person as long as we put some effort to think things true and so that's what I believe in so let me tell you what I care about. So what I care about is exactly what all the controversial, where all the controversial topics come from. I care about great food. I care about society. I care about people. Okay. All right. So I care about, you know, food, society, people. Um, so I share... Good I share about good places to eat and I talk about social issues and I just need to call a pause at this moment because beyond this point everything I'm saying is not like an, a scathing indictment on anyone uh, any country any person it's a reflection of what's happening and it is my approach to hot button topics so so have in your head and to know what's important to you. It can be the pronunciation of GIF or GIF. Like there's a, like, yeah, he chuckled. There is a huge like debate over GIF or GIF. But, or it could be a, why a certain coding language is important to you. Or it could be, um, like for me, it could be really, really social issues. So, why and how and what is what you have to zoom in on first without the writing first go in read find out a lot more about that and these are your your building blocks so when i about a year ago i, I started five meanders about 18 months ago and about a year ago um i i saw this show up on my feed and basically what happened was that this woman was taken I think this happened in China. This woman was drugged at an, in a nightclub and actually someone uh, took off clothes and snapped photos of her and shared it with her friends. And what shocked me wasn't the content, but what people were talking about. You know, if you, if you look at, if you go on Facebook and you look at the comments, this is what people were talking about. And that shocked me. Um, I realize that social media, especially Facebook, is an echo chamber. And so when you go in and you look at the comment section and find out what other people think, you realize that online people are actually, like, for some reason, irrationally brave. So what do others... <laughs> irrationally brave. So what do other people, you know, think about this? And uh, there are a lot of people who who basically said, you know, this girl is, it's her fault, she deserves it, and they were really, really rude about it. And I think this is the point I want to emphasize. 
you may be emotional about it you may you may hate it you may dislike it but read the feedback no matter how ugly it is if you disagree with your your majority stance that's perfect that's your controversy right there if not it gives you a very clear perspective on what the other side thinks and it helps you build on your nuances so after you you know get to that uh, after I, I went through all that and was it, it was pretty horrible um, then I asked myself what are my values or what do I stand for what do I think about this situation because everyone has a stand about that and the, uh, the other side on the other on the flip side of the coin some people will say you know she deserved it well you better have a damn good reason why buddy because that's exactly what people are going to ask you if you write something and, and hit the post button so for me because social media is such an echo chamber you know someone was talking about having to pay Facebook to, to get the shares and get the likes right for me you know it's about breaking the echo chamber it's about breaking away from and not having to pay Facebook lah, basically so okay so this happened on the backs of this case and this case and if you notice there were a lot of op-eds a lot of blogs about it so I, I I read all of it and I formed an opinion about it and basically what the what I was trying what I realized was that okay this is what I think about it right no matter whether they put themselves in that position or not you don't blame someone for for that happening to them and this was the call message on my blog post but if this was a title you wouldn't read it right let's let's be honest you wouldn't even click on it so nobody would care and what I realized um, this was my actually my very first viral post so what I realized was that a lot of the the good the, the viral posts that were happening then and even now uh, depended on two R's temporal relevance and com like relative comparison so the engaging content needs these two R's. What I meant, meant to say was that, okay, so we are coming off the back of these two, two cases. This new piece uh, of news happened. It's temporally relevant now. You have to link everything up. And relative, uh, it's a comparison. It's something is, something he happening right here is actually pretty crazy, crazier than what's happening somewhere else. So you, you have to have that comparative quality first uh, and finally the last R is reaction right you you want to provoke or I want to provoke a bit of an instant reaction you are going to uh, you know piss people off so don't worry about it so after a long time and ping-ponging with a few friends you know I spoke to some of the other bloggers I spoke to my university schoolmates, I spoke to my colleagues, um, and actually we, we all came up with this title. And isn't this like this, this if you're Singaporean, this, this hits you right, right in the gut, right? This, this hits you right there. Because let's face it, right, Singaporeans, we're always talking shit about other people online. But, um, and, and when we, we get called out on it, we're not happy about it. So this is your be direct, be honest moment. Your title hits your audience hard, but your content needs to say how you feel and what you think about it. And when you put a fully formed opinion online and you press the post button, you are going to get like a crap load of backlash. So that's when you realize that, oh, okay, <laughs> we might be in a bit of a deep water now. So um, once I, I hit the, po I think I posted it at 11 o'clock at night. So I think 11 o'clock at night is probably a very good time to post stuff on Facebook because a lot of people will read it. Um, and it actually went, it just shot really, really fast up. So I was getting a lot of feedback like, and not just on Facebook, but direct on the comment section of, of the blog, because that's where you're anonymous. Uh, you know, you're just another social ro uh, justice warrior in action. And so you could see the traffic going, going. This is the first day we posted it um, by hour. And then after that, 
um, you're just trying to get get internet famous, <laughs> and it's like it keeps going and going. So some people will argue with you, and you respond to your comments, right? So the the other thing that needs to be done is whether it's on Facebook, whether people call you, WhatsApp. Uh, so I receive all of that. Um, the news was calling me. Uh, my my response would be to actually engage with this audience, but in a very non-emotional way. So don't get into the na- don't go don't get dragged into name calling. Don't get dragged into the you are wrong, you are right. Just make your stance and stand firm. And uh, I, eventually, just that five day period, there were about twenty two thousand hits. Um, Today, after about a year and a half, uh, it's doubled. It's, we are at about 50, you know, 40,000, almost 50 hits. Uh, so it's five days of really going viral and then very, very long tail st- uh, content. And so, especially when you write this kind of content, if, you're, if, you're, if you have haters, you're hitting home. Um, you're making them very uneasy, um, but you stick to your stance and you keep replying because you're creating a sort of a dissonance in their head and you know hopefully you, what you're trying to do is to make them introspect make them think and the, I, I have other controversial posts that have gone viral so whether it's it's racism whether it's the internet making fun of a guy who just can't get a date uh, it's really really interesting to see the reactions and see that 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 frustration and then being able to explain yourself it's really really interesting uh, just Go take a look. Take a look at the post if you have time. Read read the comments section, and then you you get what I'm trying to say. So let's let's wrap it up. So remember the following. Ask yourself: Is this important to me? Make sure you care about the issue. Then ask: What do other people think? Figure out the majority. Figure out the minority positions. Recognize that. It's not either or, it's a range, it's a spectrum, and then you find your color in the spectrum, and then you go at it. So form a logical stand, find your anchors. So you got to go and do your research, right? Google, read more, pick up a few books, just go pick it up, figure it out, figure out the issues first, and then you can connect emotionally. Be emotive, be opinionated, have a stand. Uh, don't be afraid to piss a few people off and accept backlash because that's where you you know you're getting through. And I think the key thing about this is that a lot of us are conditioned to think in right and wrong, black and white, yes and no. But the truth of the matter is that there is a spectrum of views on any single controversial topic, whether it's gay marriage, religion, body image issues, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. What we need to do is to look at the rainbow, look at the spectrum, and pick out a color that, that's ours. And then reclaim your voice. And this is, this is what I genuinely want from you. So, um... If you if you want to like get hungry, then uh, Instagram will be my Instagram will be where I put all my food food posts, controversial stuff. Get on fivemeanders.com, and then of course for everything else, I'm on Facebook as well. Yep, um, I think my talk is a little bit of a, like a principles and guidelines. I think if you have questions, shoot, and then we can like have to and fro, and it'll be easier to figure everything out. Hi. Um, Hi. I, I think we all agree that uh, when you put out something that you want viral, it has to be very genuine, uh, well thought out and all that. But stepping back from just like talking about an issue, talking about like bloggers in general, do you have to be someone who loves the limelight to be a blogger? Because you have to stand behind what you say. And you know what, like, sometimes if you don't review yourself, then of course people don't know who's behind that and whether that's better or not than that. I think as a blogger, you have to enjoy getting your butt kicked a bit. 
Um, okay, but seriously, uh, yeah, you gotta enjoy not being in the limelight, but you gotta enjoy having your opinions really cast, like have a light thrown on your opinion. And then if and when you have that moment where you come under scrutiny, that's when you got to enjoy being told that you're wrong and then be able to have that self-awareness to, to adjust. So it, for me, it probably didn't start on the internet. It probably started at home. My mother's a teacher, so 99% of the time I'm told I'm wrong. Uh, and that helped me figure out where I stood on things. And once I figured that out, then on a larger scale, with that exposure, your opinions start to matter. And then it's easier for me to have that self-repudiation. So it uh, isn't just about having other people scrutinize you. It's about being able to scrutinize yourself first. That's, that's what I think. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else with questions? Okay, uh, if you are too shy to ask, you can always approach Kenneth uh, later. Alright. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Kenneth.